a very good morning to all of you i cordially welcome you all for this applied thermodynamics course so today's uh, classroom discussion topic is a working principle of uh, babcock and wilcox boiler and stirling boiler so the motivation for the today's class here is it is very essential to know the working principle of the babcock and wilcox boiler and stirling boiler while you are selecting a boiler for a given application so in the previous class we discussed about the working principle of uh, the fire tube boiler that is a lancashire boiler so in the today's class we are going to discuss about the important boilers of the water tube the water tube boilers examples are the babcock and wilcox boiler and similarly the stirling boiler and uh, after completion of this particular lecture you should be in a position to explain the working principles of the babcock and wilcox boiler and similarly the stirling boiler with the help of neat sketches and here just you go through the schematic diagram because in the examination i will ask you to explain the working principle of the babcock and wilcox with the help of a neat sketch so just that's why i'm requesting all of you please practice the diagram very very well because especially in the second unit we are having the boilers so that's why the schematic diagrams are very very important one and in the previous class i already discussed about how can you classify the boilers on the various methods so here also i have told you that is the the heading is the water tube boilers so basically we are using the babcock and wilcox boiler widely in majority of the thermal power plants so here these are the water tubes because the basic working principle of the water tube boilers i have already told you in the previous class that so here basically the water is flowing inside the tubes and here the flue gases are basically surrounded through this particular one so this is transferring the heat to the water so that it will be converted into the steam so this particular the steam will be sent to the turbine so here just you can see here so the water is basically flowing inside the tubes that's why it is called as the water tubes so the water tubes are basically inclined to the header so these are not horizontal these are not vertical these are inclined so the inclined water tubes are basically arranged in the babcock and wilcox boiler so that is for the effective circulation of the water and for the effective heating purpose so that uh, the efficiency of the babcock and wilcox boiler will be very high so that's why these are the inclined one so just you can see here in which the water is basically flowing inside and i already told you that is a grate the grate is nothing but on which we are basically burning the coal so this is the chain grate stroker mechanism that is over which the fuel is basically that is the coal the coal is burning over this particular the stroker mechanism so here the combustion process is basically taking place the so the flue gases so the flue gases are coming in this particular direction and water is flowing inside this particular the tubes so the flue gases are basically transferring its heat to the water which is flowing inside this particular the tubes so that's why so here these are known as the these are known as the superheated tubes these are known as the superheated tubes so that's why the upper header so this is connected to the superheater so that's why if there is any chances of the wet stream or the dry saturated stream so whenever it is going to the superheater so just you can observe here it is a superheater so here at the exit we are able to have the superheating steam the superheating steam we are able to connect here so that's why here you are able to see the superheating steam is basically collected here so this is known as the steam space and this is known as the water space and here by inserting the pressure gauge we are able to know so what is the pressure of the steam which is leaving this particular the boiler and whether the water level is maintained properly or not that can be ascertained by the water gauge and the feed valve is basically meant to pump the water to this particular the boiler drum so that is the basic fun function of the feed valve and uh, the anti priming if there are any the gases or any other unwanted things are presented in this particular the steam so that can be removed before sending it to the turbine by including the anti priming pipe so here the door for the cleaning because the flue gases are basically leaving that is after they are touching this particular the water tubes and then it is basically coming downward direction here so here with the help of this particular the thing that is there will be moving like this so with the help of moving like this that is the there will be like this 
so there will be some bucket type of the construction will be there so always they will move like this they will move reciprocating direction so if there are any unwanted things are basically attached to this particular the tubes so they will be cleaned that is they are moving like this there is a reciprocating like this so that is the door for the cleaning is there the, the, if there is any maintenance problems are there so there should be a method to enter into the boiler if it is a door for the cleaning and it is a mud box that is the unwanted mud particles are basically collected here and it will be taken away from this particular the system and these are the baffles b stands for the baff baffles here the b so baffles are basically used to increase the surface area so by which the effective the heat transfer rate will takes place so that the efficiency of the boiler will be increases so just you remember the layout of your the babcock and wilcox boiler so what are the salient features of uh, this particular the babcock and wilcox boiler so here its evaporating capacity is very very high so that is a 20000 kg per hour to 40000 kg per hour so that is the mass production rate of the steam capacity is very very high and the operating pressure is also 17.5 bar so the draught losses are very very minimum the defective tubes can be replaced easily that is the maintenance is very very easy the boil the entire boiler rests on the iron structure so it is independent of the brick structure so these are the basic salient features of the babcock and wilcox boiler so then let us go to the another boiler that is known as the stirling boiler so it is also a water tube boiler but here we are having the inclined boiler that is the two types of the things are there here so here you can see so it, it is the bent water tubes are there so these are the bent water tubes so the same principle will be applied here the to the stirling boiler also the baffles the baffles are basically attached here to increase the surface area to increase the heat transfer rate so it is the bent water tubes are basically provided here so this is basically known as the steam line and here we are having the superheated tubes so similar to the babcock and wilcox boiler so that is here it is entering into the superheated tubes so that the superheated steam is basically leaving so it is known as the steam stop valve so how much amount of the steam is basically required that much amount of the steam is basically taken from the steam stop valve for the usage application and then it is known as the header and here you are able to see it is the grate so over which the coal is burning here so the flue gases are basically flowing inside so like this so they are striking the water tubes because here the water is flowing inside this particular the tubes is the bent tubes are there so the flue gases are striking here so that the water will be converted into the steam so this is the basically steam so it is a steam line and here it is the superheated tubes is basically there like this and here it is known as the mud drum to collect the unwanted particles so from this it will be removed from the boiler like this so exactly the working principle because it is also one of the water tube boiler so that's why so the working principle will remain same but here the only thing is that here we are having the two water stream drums at the top and at a mud drip mud drum at the bottom <laughs> sorry so here you can see here two steam drums at the top so it is the first steam drum and it is the second steam drum and at the bottom we are having the mud drum so here it is a mud drum the same thing is described here that is the two water steam drums at the top and mud drum at the bottom and these are drums the drums are connected by a number of small bent tubes small bent tubes through which the water will flows so just you observe the schematic diagram so small bent tubes so these are the bent tubes all these are the bent tubes over which the water is basically flowing inside so based on this let us solve the questions which were asked in the previous competitive examinations so one of the question is given in the ias 2004 so the question here is the an attempt rater is used in some utility boilers for what purpose so if there are the a b c d options are there so it is basically used to control the degree of the superheat the next question when inspection doors on the walls of the boilers are opened flame does not leap out because what is the reason so the correct answer is the pressure inside is negative because the vacuum pressure is basically maintained inside so that's why the pressure is inside negative so that's why the flame does not leap out because of this particular reason so like this in the today's class we are able to Uh, discuss about the two important boilers of water tube boilers one is 
the Babcock and Wilcox boiler and the second one is the Stirling boiler. So once again I am requesting all of you practice the figures of uh, all these particular the boilers in the examination point of view. So that is the line diagram is very very important one and how the steam is basically generated in the water tube boilers so that should be known to you. So thank you one and all for listening this important lecture on the water tube boilers. Thank you.